Hello everyone and welcome to our meetup uh, today for Tech Excellence. So first of all, uh, an overview about us. Our vision is to raise the bar of technical excellence across the world. And the following is an overview of some of our uh, past speakers as well as some of our coming up speakers. Also, please make sure that you've registered on Meetup so that you can receive our future uh, notifications about events. And also, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, you can follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Additionally, we also have a GitHub community where you can ask any uh, technical questions that, that you might have. So for today, I'm really happy to announce that uh, we will be uh, talking about a really important topic, uh, the essentially tech interview cookbook. So with uh, Radislav Moldovan and Adrian Muller. So they both work at BIL uh, Luxembourg, uh, working as a software uh, craftsman and also Adrian as a technical coach uh, additionally and Radislav is um, also the founder of Becoming Tech. So I'm really excited about this session today. And now I will hand over to you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, and uh, hope you hope you enjoy. Um, as, as you as you introduce us, we are um, software craftsmen. Yes, we are not um, recruiters, professional recruiters, let's say. Yeah, uh, yes. Human resources is not something that we are programming, let's put it like this way. Voilà. So it's important as an introduction to say that uh, uh, what we present is our experience and uh, it's just to share with you and hopefully to have a good exchange at the end and uh, yes. see what you, what you think. Um, so my name is Adrien. Um, I was developer for uh, four years. Uh, then I um, I started uh, with Agile a few years ago, and um, I did not uh, quit software development. But um, it's difficult to maintain uh, to maintain uh, two things at the two same. things at the same time. I like also to solve problems with the human. Uh, related to human resources, you mean? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And Rodislav? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Rodislav Moldovan. I'm a software craftsman at uh, BIL. I'm um, one of the things that I've noticed is as well that uh, quite a lot of companies are uh, dealing with uh, the same issues, like we are trying to solve at uh, BIL, uh, technical excellence, uh, human uh, skills in the teams and so on, deliver of the product. So I've created a company called Becoming Tech, which is trying to solve this uh, as an offer to, to, to the customers. So about uh, our context, so we work as a software craftsman, we do technical coaching, agile coaching um, in our company. Um, we are in this transversal team, craft team. And um, we are not recruiters, but we would like to help in a context that uh, we are in the last mile of a big bank before we change the core banking of uh, in, in our company. It's a really huge project uh, which has started eight years ago and uh, should finish in the next month. Yes. Um, people are really overloaded with work. They are... Uh, not able to do the, um, the recruitments by themselves, not even to, to onboard the people. So um, we try to, to help them. It's not easy. Yeah, the, the, the goal here, uh, considering that the teams were so busy uh, with doing their own uh, uh, projects and doing their own development, they what they needed first uh, in case of uh, uh, bringing more resources to a team or replacing certain resources because you know people come and go. So 
the one of the main things that we needed is to actually find the candidates with the required skills for the team and for the mission for this particular uh, huge project. So required skills for the team and the mission. This is very important because you can find developers uh, quite quickly, developers who can uh, write code, uh, read code, or do some debugging or whatnot. However, due to nature of because it's banking, because it's finance, because it's, uh, lots of lots of uh, inputs into this formula, it gives us um, some particular challenges in order to not slow down the teams and uh, provide as good onboarding as possible uh, for everyone, for the candidate, for the newcomer, basically, and for the team. We we immediately see the, the challenge uh, with that. The first thing was that um, we were not looking from for one candidate for one team, but imagine that uh, we have um, five to four teams in parallel that are each one were uh, looking for uh, sometimes one, sometimes two candidates. Uh, let's say we were we were. Uh, we received how many CVs? I don't remember, but yes, more than 100 eventually. But yeah. this is a, a graphical uh, overview of only the people that we met. Um, uh, we met around 100 people, yes, and uh, on all those people, um, you can see the, the ratio, the ratio was uh, 70 around 75 percent. It was KO. It was it was just a no. And OK was like 15%. Yes. 15%. So imagine that if you need to spend uh, one or two hours for each candidate, they, they, there is like uh, 100 candidates, a little bit more. And multiply by the number of people who conduct the interviews. Exact. This will be multiplied by X number, uh, which in the end, will cost you a lot of man hours um, to, to deliver. And uh, if you want to, uh, if you go through the CVs, that's one thing, but you sometimes you, you, you see the CV and you know clearly it doesn't work. But, and quite often you see the CV and you are not sure. So you need to balance how much time they have. Can I see this candidate? Let's say with the CV, uh, it, it happened to me once that we were looking for a, a, a technical coach yeah. and we received the CV of um, a sport coach. The guy just see coach and he sent the CV. It was a sport coach. So okay. it's easy. You can just say no. Yeah. But most of the time, you receive a CV with hundreds of references. Yeah. People have seen like what is related to the people, what is related to the, the, the project he worked on. It was like impossible. So let's say what we tried. Um, a session of, like, like we said, one hour and a half, two hours, with the everyone um, uh, related to, to the offer. Like, we we are both here, the yeah. candidates, the, um, the... Somebody from the company, account somebody, manager. Voilà, account manager, something like this. Um, and one or two people from the team, like uh, the... Uh, like senior developer from the team, um, tech lead, and the uh, product owner. Yeah. At least, well, this kind of this kind of meeting. So, so it was becoming, if we can make a reference to mob programming, it was basically mob interviewing, which meaning it was just too many people in the room, which was giving us uh, quite uh, weird, not only to us, but it was uh, really not so comfortable for the candidate in front of us. And the results were corresponding with the experience. And um, most of the time, it was hard to, to cut it short. It means like um, we have this meeting uh, set up for two hours. And what if in the first 15, 20 minutes, we made like to see that, no, it will not fit. It was awkward to stop here because we have like five, six person uh, coming here if you stop it's awkward an awkward situation yes because quite often the people regardless of the sides from uh, from the bank from the candidate from the account manager people uh, were having this uh, this element which you say just 
purely awkward and some some people were saying yes but why did you book two hours if, if you weren't sure or you were sure but why did you check for more so it was it was very difficult to satisfy everyone and uh, it was well, and um, but as we said hein, when we started we, we we had experience with recruitment but not with this kind of volume yes with yes, all, yes we had done recruitment in the past yes. with Rodislav, but not with this kind of so many people to, to, to meet. So like uh, we, we go quick on this slide because you, you, you know, you have understood that it, it did not work, but just to, to give you an idea also of what did not work so well was like trivia question. Yeah. Um, what do we call uh, OP? What... OP, what is OP? Like the people then can just, uh, learn what is written on wikipedia and yeah. what what is rest what is rest um also we a question that we thought were good at the beginning like um, what is the most challenging project you have worked on and can you draw it it looks like it's a nice question but after we tried this a few times we just um, we just went to the conclusion that it was like with the same as with the CV, like people say things they've seen in the project, in the context of the project, but we don't know if it's what they have implemented themselves or if it's something else, some, someone else. Yes. What are the problems that you solved and what did you learn? It's not with this kind of question that, that we know that. Yeah, and the, the open two open questions, for example. Two open questions, one that we uh, used to ask, for example, what happened when you type Google in Google? It's a question where you can give a speech, you can give an workshop, one week workshop on what is happening behind this question. You can even answer it in instantly. Well, I get my search results, you know. So it's 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 too abstract and it has too many details. So uh, you never know. The candidate never knows when he or she needs to stop in order to. Uh, uh, know for sure that the answer was delivered. Uh, this is what uh, the uh, interviewer was uh, expecting, but maybe should I need that? Should I bring more details to the to the answer? So questions needs to be balanced. Questions needs to have a certain balance. Otherwise, if it's too closed, then you will get only answers yes, no. If it's too open, you just risk to do thirty minutes on uh, what is a DNS. So that's the issue. So that's what we tried. And um, at the end, uh, after, let's say, a, a few weeks, we came to, to, to this approach. And um, there is three parts that we will detail. Um, uh, but just for you to have an overview, um, first contact is, let's say, a short, 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 short meeting. Max 30 minutes, it means sometimes it's 20, it's enough. Yeah. Um, really just to understand, but we will go into details what, what we mean with that, but first contact and it can stop here. Yeah, it can stop here. So we don't, uh, we, we check the CV a little bit, but not too much. If, if, if the CV match the technology and the experience seems rather okay, we make the, the person first contact. If it went well, or if we have uh, doubts, uh, if we are not sure, we go uh, for the technical assessment. Uh, technical assessment could be with screen sharing or with a code review. Uh, that means the candidate share the screen. We ask him to, to him or her to, to code something, yeah. or we just we share a piece of code and we ask feedback on, on the piece of code, and then we we organize a, a meeting with the team. The idea is that the, we don't take too much time from the from the from the uh, actual kind of, team. Yeah, um, it's usually 15 minutes. Huh? Up to 15 yeah. minutes uh, for the team, and it's usually after the technical assessment. In total, you should not spend. We should not spend more than two hours in total for yeah. the three steps, and we try not to spend. Uh, too much elapsed days uh, in between so we we are still fresh with the, what happened with the candidate so let, let's let's go into details of uh, each each part um first contact 
what is interesting for us, it's about what is the personality behind uh, the CV. And as we said, um, what is related to the candidate and what is related to uh, project he worked on. So understand, um, imagine you are, uh, it's normally not so difficult to imagine for you, but you worked for uh, 10 years um, in the software development. Um, you have a CV, a lot of technology, etc., etc. But maybe in the last six months, what you did is what you want to, to, to pursue. So maybe, uh, maybe uh, ninety percent of your CV is not is not relevant because what is yeah. interesting you is what you did in the last six months. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's the last two years uh, are not something you want to to continue you want to change yeah, yeah. so that's why we want to discuss with the candidates what are you interesting to interested to do in the future um, um and we ask simple questions like uh, uh, what are your top two technology and um and then we, we follow up we follow up on the on the answers voila we follow up with an um, open question uh, understand what are the point cons, and um, for instance, we never ask. Um, we never ask uh, like uh, uh, three questions just to 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 or, or trivia question as yes, we said. Yeah, like yeah. we we never mention TDD if the candidate does not mention TDD. We, yes, we, yes. We would not ask uh, uh, what is TDD and. Uh, how you, how, you put how, it in place. how you put it in place. But if the candidate uh, mention it, we just ask, okay, uh, so what is TDD for you? What is the good state in your opinion, etc.? It's just that um, we are interested to know, to learn, to learn, learn about the person. To learn about the person. One moment, just one moment here. I'll add a, a quick uh, comment. The goal, the main goal of the first contact basically is to get a first impression based by uh, just by a couple of questions for example you in your cv you worked a lot of back-end and front-end applications uh, what what protocols did you found the most efficient and uh, why these protocols are efficient or what kind of uh, architectural principles do you think are best fit into this particular example if uh, the candidates mentions that yes we how you put some technical technical excellence in practice or how you did, uh, did have you done any clean code when you whenever you are coding uh, did you practice clean code did you did you focus on that and if the candidate starts to say yes i did xp tdd i know anything and then we ask okay then what would you how is what is tdd for you how did you implement it so uh, again it's really to learn about the person and the perspective of this per person. And when we ask the questions, we can say, okay, we think that uh, the, na the variable's name should be like this in case it gets to that, or for us it is blah, blah, blah. And uh, you see here we, we think, here uh, we have different opinions, but it's not a problem. We explain that we all want to learn about each other and we want to know if basically we are compatible. Like um, candidates say, I like to, I like to do um, code. I code with a lot of attention to quality. Yeah. Okay. What is quality for you? Yes. Yes. If you are not able to answer that, then we probably in the in ten minutes we know that we don't continue and it works. Yeah. 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 Yes. It so works. basic. We we not not we are not simply using the keywords to follow up, but we use the keywords that the candidates are putting accent on. So in this way. Uh, we follow up and voila. So next step, the technical assessment. Um, funny thing with that. Um, we, uh, as I said, we, 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 we have two forms. Two forms. So zip file, we send the zip file by email and um, we expect that candidates understand what we ask. It happened that uh, uh, at the end, uh, it does not work anymore, does not compile anymore. So for first thing, it has to, to work. Um, also, we, we, we are looking for uh, over design and uh, 
time box, like if we say uh, you have uh, 30 minutes to, to do one thing, uh, just just focus and try to to like to 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 make pass at least one test or something like this. We had also uh, some interesting discussion with that because one of our colleagues once told us, "Oh, your your zip file." Everyone in the place, he has the, the zip file and uh, it leaks. He, it, it was leaked and uh, you need to change it. Then we, we discussed, we had a brainstorm and we said, okay, good. It's a good thing that it leaks because in this zip file, what we've put is like example of things that we do. Like yes. uh, we did TDD in that project. So you have PDDD, it had the uh, various design patterns. Various design patterns and uh, uh, like a uh, uh, framework that we use. And uh, yes, the way it, it was like um, things that we do. So we say, okay, if, if a candidate spend time uh, with a leaked version of our uh, zip file, spend time to, to make it pass, then good, we can... Uh, we can work with him, yes, or her, and it's, it's good. So at the end, I think it's it's even it could be a, a strategy to make it leak. Uh, yes, because at the end of the day, this is we in our exercises we are not sending uh, please uh, parse a binary tree or please uh, sort uh, I don't know basic pool sort. We we actually uh, sending uh, one app that is managing uh, quotes from movies. Voila, or doing some basic CRUD or anything of this uh, of this level. So the goal is not to do algorithms, usual algorithms that 100% nobody does in our uh, in the industry where we're in the not the industry but in the uh, business that we are working. Usually we do uh, business algorithms, but not the technical ones. So we want to test what we need as, and we come back to the first idea matching of the skills and matching of the profile so if it leaks fine if the person the candidate will prepare and learn about this perfect perfect it's it's absolutely no problem if the candidate can learn can learn beforehand before joining us and can prove that what well, the learning is paying back no issues about that and, and so as you mentioned we have um, another way to do something it depends on the time that we have it depends on the Maybe our mood, if we have the same yeah. <laughs> too much. I think it's the mood, yes. Um, then we can share the screen and um, ask the candidate to, like, uh, imagine that we we are, uh, uh, you are, uh, yes, or, or maybe uh, you you are coaching two, yes, two, two, two newcomers in the team. We have write some code and uh, uh, what would you change? And uh, we can see, um, um, how does he uh, speak? How he explain his choice and um, things like this? It's interesting also. How the candidate is using the tooling? The, like the, ID the tooling that we don't see with the second option, but yeah. it's also important for sure. Uh, it's not only code; it's how we, how, how the we... candidate is using. Uh, is is he fluent with uh, with his ID? He's her, he, her. Voila. Yes. So, uh, and uh, how the, this person will be able to communicate to us while working? Are there any emotions involved? Is it clean? Is it simple? Is it uh, let me finish it and then I'll talk? Or can we talk along the way? Can we ask questions? Can we do pair programming maybe? So it's all kind of these kind of things of interactions that most likely will happen in the in the work where we are working today and it's i'm pretty sure that it happened to most of the people attending to this uh, live session today okay so technical assessment um and the, the last uh, last part is that if every step before went well uh, then we do um finally it's able to to meet the team the idea um, is that at 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 that part of the recruitment process, we have an idea that we can work with the, the candidate because we know before uh, what, how, how, the, how the team, what are the, the framework technology that the team is working on. So if the candidate have paced successfully the 
two, two, two sessions before, we know we can work uh, with the candidates, but need, now we need to, the candidate need to, to decide also um, after uh, he has a discussion with the team, both, both has to get a feeling uh, yes. because um, at the end, we don't work with the candidate. We know that technically it, it, it fits. Uh, of course, in the discussion, we also mention things uh, like uh, how the how the teams are organized, uh, uh, what is the size of the company, a typical day, a typical day. But this is a crucial aspect. Um, but the member of the team also they, they they may ask question, but it's not um, usually it's not uh, again uh, something that. Um, Usually, the members of the teams, when they are asking questions, they are asking questions related to their uh, daily life. For for example, team a team who is doing the document management. Well, they are using Documentum. So, what what kind of ask questions we can see is uh, Did you use Documentum? Yes uh, or no? No, the the question is over. If you use yes, which version did you use? The certain engines, particular engines, or blah blah blah. So these kind of questions, some other teams might say, look, we are doing lots of, uh, I don't know, uh, API, we, we are doing, we are using API gateways. Uh, can you tell me how would you use an API gateway or it can happen, but usually it's mostly again for the team to know things particular or specific to that job because, because the team is uh, living this every day or because the team saw uh, other colleagues beforehand who never managed to learn the project or they learn the technology and they uh, and then they had a bad experience everybody in the team had a bad experience so they're trying to prevent this kind of little quirks uh, in, uh, beforehand and just a moment and right. when we meet the team what we consider is that it's crucially important for the team to meet the candidate and for the candidate to meet the team, it's it's in extremely important, uh, especially in physical, if it's possible to meet them in place, to, to see each other, to have a feeling, to see if there is a chemistry or to see if there is anti-chemistry. Well, people, uh, for some reason, regardless of the reason, it like literally doesn't matter what is the reason behind, if uh, they can work together or not. Because if a candidate just comes into a team and they start working right away, and the, there is no chemistry, or uh, even worse, anti-chemistry. Let's put it this way: this can this can break the team, can break the team, can break the deliverables, can can create too much too much friction. So, no, there is no magic. I think we we try to be objective on yeah. the on the if the skill of the candidate can match with the the needs on the team, but at the end, it's. The choice is subjective. It's yeah, like yeah. if they have a feeling or not together. Yes, for sure. Um, they, you know that they they, they will spend uh, at the minimum eight hours a day together. They need to they need to connect. Yeah. Um, we did that in the context of the pandemic, also, uh, which was um, it helped us to to do these short meetings because, of course, before. Um, it was not common to to do visio 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 conference yes. uh, recruitment. It was like uh, people are coming. They, they, they spend time physically physically. Yeah. They spend time in the in the traffic. Uh, they need to. Sometimes they can take a plane because they, they live uh, I don't know where. No, no so you you did that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Already, huh? yeah, yeah. So uh, it can be coming from another city, leaving mm. uh, stuff behind, uh, coming passing the interview, which is a lot of investment. And the traffic, the in Luxembourg, the traffic can be really sad experience. Huh? So now, even if we are mostly coming back to, to the office, we still keep uh, that the first uh, the first contact is always uh, on online. the video online, uh, because we don't we want we don't want to to lose time for the candidates and for us. Uh, we don't want to let the candidates lose time. And we don't want to lose our time, of course. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Let, let's see what our uh, findings um, about about that. Uh, imagine that uh, we spend like around a year, a little bit, a year, 
We started uh, December. Yeah, yeah, about a year. Yes, yes, yes. yes. About a year. Yeah. Uh, so we did that intensively uh, for for a year. First thing. Uh, yes. I like the image. <laughs> to be to be in the shoes the, the of, of the candidates to like we want we want to um, to do um, something that we would like to to have like if we go to a to an interview we would have liked that it, it was like this so yes, we don't yes. ask we don't ask um, uh, question that we would not like that someone ask us yeah um, trick trick question that silly question or yeah, yeah, trick, yeah, indeed, indeed. Three questions or silly questions are um, can create friction. That's number one. Can create uh, an impression for the candidate that you don't know the subject uh, since you are asking it. And uh, already there is a lot of emotions involved. We are humans after all, so there is lots of emotions uh, when you are coming to interview. When you are organizing the interview, you have much less. However, when you are coming to interview most of the time you have emotions so three questions can actually be a bad a bad thing for the candidate and the, the candidate can uh, completely get can get stumped and uh, don't understand what is happening why discussion even exists and so on so this is not okay we we tried a couple of times to use very light three questions what we had to do after that it's mostly me who is trying to do that to see if this can work or not however I was usually spending after that five to ten minutes to bring back the mood, uh, positive mood, and to let the candidate make comfortable and let know that no, no, it was just a trick question, no worries, blah blah blah. So this is breaking the rhythm of the inter uh, of the interview. It's not bringing anything valuable. It can make uh, it can improve your own. You can satisfy your own ego, but it's not bringing. Uh, a valuable outcome from the from the interview. So no. And, and we need also to make sure that the, the candidates feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, so we we really prefer that it's like uh, if we are um, uh, at at uh, just discussing between uh, like if you were already colleagues and we discussing. Uh, yes. 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 Voilà. What happened? So just to say this picture, it's just what we don't want to happen. Huh? <laughs> it's not the result of uh, the interview. Huh? Yeah. We don't want that someone is in this uh, this mood after we, we met him. Yeah. Um, also, what we found out, well, it's easy huh? that um, we you, you've seen you, you've seen the statistics like seven seventy five percent uh, of of uh, no go from our side, and um, of course it's not because the candidate uh, has no qualification. We have met uh, candidates that are uh, are developing Java for uh, fifteen or twenty years. So we don't we don't say they don't, they don't know how to develop. For yes. sure, it's not the it's not the problem. It's just that we don't look only for skills, uh, development, hard skills. Hard skills. Yeah. Yes, we we are looking for soft skills. You said, yeah, uh, but also um, particular the, skills the, and uh, candidates which fit a mission that yeah. uh, is difficult. Like uh, yeah. it's yeah, it's a core banking change in our case. However, it needs to have some particular skills. Just writing Java for fifteen years doesn't mean that you know very well the Spring Boot framework or Quarkus framework. Or doing lots of Spring Boot doesn't necessarily mean that you know very well Java itself, because maybe you wrote the whole 10 years, you just wrote uh, MVC controllers. I don't know. Uh, that's it. So it's uh, we are really looking for a specific uh, collection of skills for different com for di not com I said companies, for different teams. Voilà. And uh, for that reason and other, we also avoid to give direct feedback uh, to the candidates like um, uh, work does not work. I know uh, some people, they, they like to, to know, uh, should we continue or no? But in our experience, a um, few times it went okay, but most of the times it was really 
bad, bad, bad. Like even we we had we received sometimes like uh, people that are coming back to us a few weeks later that they are still thinking about yeah you said it does not work but look I've learned that I've learned that and now I know now I know yes but now we we don't need someone anymore we found and uh, I know it's difficult uh, we had to make a choice and uh, it's it's giving direct feedback what we saw. Even for people with uh, quite a lot of years in experience, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot uh, quite a lot of years in experience in uh, interviews, giving and uh, uh, taking interviews, for a lot of people is very hard to get a feedback. Very very difficult. And first of all, it's difficult to give a feedback. It's even harder to receive a feedback. So um, giving feedbacks on the spot and saying, look, we think your profile match here, but doesn't match here. And you see, we need this particular skill set because we have these projects and they are in progress or they're about to start or blah, 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 things. And uh, it went, I think we have, we had like two or three cases when the feedback was fine out of um, right. uh, slightly more than 100. So uh, the feedbacks, uh, at the moment we stopped giving feedbacks just like this. And when people are coming for a bit of feedbacks, we said, look, it doesn't match the, the skill set. And uh, after this discussion, we saw that it doesn't fit. So we are sorry about that, but we are not going. A goal frustration. Them. And also sometimes it's just easy, simple, but we can be wrong also. Of course. If, yes, yes. So, yes. Um, OK, we did feedback. We give feedback. But what if we were wrong anyway? And it's, 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 it's like this. We need to make choice. We did a choice. Maybe it was the wrong one, but uh, nothing to do with with you. It's just not you. Not not this time. Maybe next time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had. By the way, we had candidates who were coming for some uh, interviews. Uh, the the answer from our side was no, no go. And then uh, six or seven months later, uh, they they will be applying again. And by the time they will prepare, or they will learn some some things and it will pass. We, we had this uh, experience as well. So in the end of the day, we still decided to not give feedback because it was bringing, it was risky. It uh, it was uh, possible to give, to create more problems than solve problems. So this was our solution. However, you are free to add in the comments your experience with feedbacks. And uh, if you have some suggestions, then uh, please feel free. And then we can talk after uh, about that. Uh, after the after the slides. Yeah, let's let's see a, um, a few slides um, before we we go to the, the question but yes. uh, a few observations also yeah. um, not many ladies yeah oh this is yes um, yes this is um, just a plain fact that um, unfortunate uh, fact. Uh, we, we were um, uh, I don't have I don't have the reason for that. Uh, but um, we had around 5% in our statistics of candidates. Yeah. And um, it means that we have hired maybe two or three. I think two. Two. Two, yes. Um, also, we, we discussed that um, we try to avoid a trivia question. It's sometimes difficult for the candidates. Uh, they they are used to, or they, they expect trivia questions. Yes. So when where we when as we don't ask trivia questions, sometimes it's not always, but sometimes uh, we feel like uh, it's difficult for them to give not the Wikipedia answer, but to give their answer. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, it's sometimes dif difficult. Yeah, so just to give an example, we had a candidate who told us, we have a couple of candidates, I think three or four, who explicitly told us, I'm not comfortable with you answering my opinion. I prefer that you are uh, asking me questions like what we call OP. And for us, it was, it was, uh, we said, okay. So we switched to this trivia format and they, even the answers weren't uh, appropriate. Mm -hmm. So every time, 
And um, what is happening as well when we are asking uh, people, let's imagine you, you, you are saying in the team, well, because you mentioned before that you practice TDD, let's imagine that we are starting a new project and you're saying, let's do, let's practice TDD for this particular project. And uh, can you tell us more, why would you go with TDD? Because you mentioned and you say you wanted to use it and you used it before and uh, why would you go with TDD? And usually in such questions, people are saying, well, TDD is a set of practices uh, where you, and we're answering in a, in a wiki format, in a trivia format. And we're saying, no, 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 that's, we, we all know what's TDD, but for you, why would you put, how do you think this can bring value or speed or quality or, Anything, I mean. So this and uh, we did. And we did, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we did. And we keep asking them to ask them, um, no, we did. What you did, what did you do in this in this context? So, yes. and uh, last, last, last observation is, <laughs> make me smile also. Yes. Um, really two years of pandemic and people don't have a uh, camera uh, and a microphone. But sometimes on a 30 minutes meeting, we spend 15 minutes waiting for the, the, the candidate to set up the microphone or camera. Even though we are sending and we are asking explicitly, please make sure that you have a working camera and microphone. Which is sad. Which is sad, yes. It's uh, something that uh, we didn't expect it, let's put it this way. Okay, now um, in, to, to go to, to the conclusion and maybe have uh, more an open conclusion. Yeah. Um, a few food for thought. Uh, our, our idea was to discuss about uh, our recruitment process, but there are topics which are linked to this and that we would like to discuss with you uh, uh, in, uh, in the Q&A session after, after that. Of course, we are interested to, to know what are, what, is, what are your opinions about what we just discussed. Um, also, what interests us is about the how to retain the talents because you see that it's a lot of effort to to get uh, to get to work with good uh, candidates and to to find uh, the um, the right person for the teams. Um, it's about uh, the company culture. There are a lot lot of things in that in that like giving uh, autonomy to to the to the people that having. Um, a community we, we had uh, at BIL, we had a community of practices. Um, we have like um, architecture that is not top down, which is collaborative, things like this. Yes, yes, and try to, to, to enforce that. And so, um, for example, we were we worked uh, on breaking, um, well, not, not breaking, but actually maintaining the uh, a collaborative, as you said in order to avoid having ivory towers or uh, any other things like that. So uh, when the company allows you to, to develop a culture, that's, that's, that works. If you don't have a company culture, if you cannot have autonomy or uh, you don't have the concept of uh, work-life balance, conducting an interview, conducting a nice interview, it's, it can be dangerous because it can backfire. And how exactly it can backfire? There are many ways. First of all, it's just mouth to mouth. This person will just say to other people, you know, they had such a nice interview. They're asking such nice questions. I went there and what I had to do is just write programs that are parsing XML files and that's it. This is everything. This is all I did. So, and I wasn't, uh, free to choose my tools. I had to write Java code in Notepad++ or stuff like that. So if you are conducting the interview, your interviews needs to be associated with your uh, with the company culture because people will speak mouth to mouth, will pass the word. And believe me, usually the bad words are passed, not the good words most of the times. And uh, they can give uh, bad uh, feedbacks on Glassdoor. Uh, you can get a uh, bad post in uh, LinkedIn. So please make sure when you're building your interview process that this build this interview process is aligned with your company culture with 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 the values that you want to bring forward that's very important also for us luxembourg is a is a small country and uh, um... just one more. Yeah. what we speak when we say like small country just to be clear the whole country 
has 620,000 people. So the, the entire country. I think for some, uh, some of you, it can be only just a part of the city having this population. So it's, it's very small. Uh, Work-life balance, of course, since the pandemic, people have changed and uh, yeah. now, now they, work, they want to. One of the questions that we are the most asked is about uh, what is the t uh, remote working policy, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. About the diversity, so we said we we made um, a constat. It's it's about uh, there is not so much a lady who are applying, and um, we don't have a, a solution to that. But there are a few a few things uh, that we can we can take in account, like the in the hiring strategy, um, uh, we. Mostly, most of the time, we don't speak English. We speak, speak French, and in, in French, there is a difference. Uh, we are looking for un développeur or une développeuse. We, we make a, a difference uh, in the wording. So most of the, the, the job offers, it's looking for un développeur. Yes, 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 indeed. And, 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 Which will translate like we are looking for a male developer. Voilà. So it could be a blocker. So it, sometimes it can be only a matter that if a, if a girl read this, she just don't recognize we are looking for a developer. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I'm yes. not a male, so it's not for me. So things like this, uh, the bro culture in the open space, like, um, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's have a beer after the, after the, um, after the, after work, yeah. but uh, pizzas, beer, voila, love um, parties. What if uh, I don't drink alcohol? Yeah. And uh, what if uh, I would prefer uh, to go to a spa or I would prefer to something else than a beer? Or what you just a walk in the park, you know, just yeah, walking in the, the park. Gym. Or, or so this bro culture is, is dominant uh, in, in the today in the, in the open space. I'd say that it could be it could be an issue. And also, there are things that they are less in our. Um, uh, well, we don't have an impact on that, but education. Well, we have an impact as as, yes. uh, as a we manage. Parent. We manage to get, get, have an impact. You mean about removing the education part? No, no, I mean like you are a parent of two two girls. Yes, it's about your education. How you educate uh, your, your kids? Yeah, like um, before when we were uh, kids. Yeah. Um, it was a strong culture of computer are for uh, male and uh, ah, girls yeah, yeah, they yes. prefer uh, yes 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 uh, girls with the girl toys and boys with voilà. the mechanical computer and cars. This this is is changing has changed, but we yes, will see yes. the result of that in Lots fifteen of or, or yeah. twenty years. Yes. yes so yes. Um, education is something. Uh, that is the responsibility of everyone to change this uh, stereotypes. mentality, stereotypes, and probably a lot of other things. But it could be um, it could be a, a talk only about that, and it's not the point. We, we did we did a talk about that in Luxembourg Jazz. We have yeah. a meetup in Luxembourg called Luxembourg Jazz where we speak precisely about um, about JavaScript, and we did a talk about women in tech. Precisely, we spoke about JavaScript, so we invited. JavaScript developers, uh, women who, ex who spoke about that, and you know, all of them, everybody said the problem it's social things, uh, social pressure, education, and at home, in school, whatever, is that girls, oh, girls, computers, no, no, it's not a mapping. So, yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed, it was a huge, uh, huge thing that come came out of, the, out of this discussion, which we, we did uh, live on, uh, live in our meetup. And I wanted to add here about education one, one well, detail is uh, we completely removed the education section from our uh, job postings. There's yes. no such a thing where you have to, you need to have a high school, a middle school, a uh, university, uh, business, whatever. So in, in our job postings, IT, precisely because we work in an IT department, we remove the education because education, yes, we all know education is important. No, no questions about that. Any uh, education is important. However, 
you can have you can finish uh, psychology and you can build the best or criminology i don't know and you can build one of the best tools for code scanning which is code scene for example or you can do you can never finish an IT because you did something else and you can write uh, the most amazing books uh, for IT, like Spring Security or There are many, many cases when people never finished an university or not an IT university and they became uh, really great influencers today. So education is important, yes. However, this is not a requirement. This is, this, is, this is an asset for you as a candidate or as a human. This is not a requirement for the job. The job at, at the end of the day, you can do it, good. You can do it in the team, even better. Agree. Um, that's it uh, for the slides. Um, so, uh, open for question. Um, mm -hmm. How was the chat? Right. Uh, yeah. So first of all, I want to say I really enjoyed this session. Um, this was definitely an out of the box uh, discussion about um, the interview process. And this is something which also where I also have a strong interest in since I've also done a lot of interviewing and I see recruitment as crucial because if a company makes you know, a mistake in recruitment, then later it just feeds in into all other problems and the other also really important highlight that came through this presentation was the emphasis on culture so here you presented to us okay what's the tech interview process assuming we're looking for high quality uh, developers who will be working in a company which actually has this engineering uh, culture. So I think that this was really a great takeaway. Uh, we will now then switch over to the questions. So how do you evaluate soft skills? Is the meeting with the team enough? Or maybe if you could also say examples of people who had soft skills versus who didn't have soft skills, how do you differentiate between those those people? Soft skills, there are a few aspects. Uh, first thing, well, two main aspects, let's say. Um, first thing, are they able to explain their choice? Uh, because we, we, they, they, uh, we emphasize on the teams. They will work on teams. It's not like they work alone and they work on a project and in they the soldier, mode. The, voilà, soldier mode. They need to work in a team. Then it means they need to receive feedback, give feedback on the code, explain their choice and um, we have design uh, design session also design chapter where you need to uh, defend defend you have an id you need to explain why it's a good idea what are the different uh, way that you that are the possible ways to do why you choose that over that so this is so our interviews basically are running like this so give an example Please, uh, well, uh, I'm Rodislav, description, Adrian, description. Hello, Michael, let's assume, or well, uh, Guillaume in this case. Hello, Guillaume. Please, uh, can, you, can, you, can you speak about yourself in a couple of sentences? No need to uh, say the whole uh, CV, just present yourself, like pitch your profile if you want, if you want to. And with this, for example, we're already testing if the person can stay coherent and speak, not speak a lot, with, may, with a couple of words. And then we are asking, why do you want this? What is the reason you are using this dependency? Uh, what is the reason you are using this uh, design pattern and so on? And the, when the people are saying, because this pattern brings us blah, 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 or the pros and cons, or what are the dangers using this? And just by asking these basic questions, which are happening all over the place in our day-to-day uh, -day work, the people are showing communication skills, coherency skills, uh, professional vocabulary skills and so on. So we are testing everything that's tech and this, this kind of questions allows us to do that. And at the end, the team, usually in the team, you know, we have a uh, project manager, scrum master or whatnot, who can ask soft skill questions as well. So we have one part tested and another by the team. Yeah. One also important aspect that uh, we are um, uh, really looking at is about do is the candidate understand uh, what we ask to do 
like uh, ah, yes, you, yes, yes. you have to fix a test yeah. we say we say you have uh, like 20 minutes yeah there are like uh, 10 tests which are failing you don't have the time 10 to, unit tests 10 unit tests yeah. you don't have the time to do every everything try to focus on one yeah 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 exactly, exactly. a lot like half i exaggerate maybe yes. but a lot they are just uh, they don't understand they yeah. they panic they voilà. so like just this. for the second part is the meeting uh, with the team enough uh, no not really uh, the team will ask questions they'll have a feeling uh, we'll give the our feedback so we'll try to give as much as we can because we come out as well from with this idea uh, you said the two hours in total mm -hmm. max two it can yeah. go up to two hours so imagine two hours for candidate me you one member of a team another member of a team so 10 hours two hours interview transforms into 10 hours 10 working hours which is one man day and two hours so uh, which agree, is expensive he uh, agree that um you also have to understand that um it's our context that is really the, the team don't have time so oh, we oh, don't oh. we don't have to fine, we don't want to to take too much of their time ideally um we ideally we it would be not us who do the interview from the beginning yes it would be the team, the team without us but um, it's not possible uh, today so it's uh, it's it's a trade-off that they they delegate to us this first part um ideally they would do everything by themselves yeah. uh, just also to for you to have um all the the info that things that we tried we also had teams that um, have asked to uh, spend uh, half a day with the candidate oh yes yes yes, so, yes. and it's possible huh? we, when you work with a um, um, uh, con contractor yeah. uh, consultant, you, consultant yeah. you can ask them uh, uh, we pay you half a day half, one day and just uh, we test we you spend the time uh, spend one day or half a day with uh, with the team and uh, both they have a good good feeling yeah this is the best this is the best honestly if you can do that that's magic no, if you can do that once you have passed the the first step like you don't to, 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 not not useful if the candidate came for half a day and, and in 15 minutes you see it doesn't work it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> well, that, that's a good point uh, um yeah uh, also regarding soft skills uh did you ever use any psychometric or psychological uh testing from hr or not not needed regarding these points i know we never use that uh, in my experience it, it's an amusement for me personally, because when I see this kind of test, I always crack them to get the maximum score, the best possible score. And it's, it's very easy, right? there is no magic there. And um, I never saw an, an actual value. Lot, it's very easy to crack. And it, it, it's, it, um, I per personally, you, you from, from myself, but I mean, I, I, I train myself on uh, process communication, for, for instance, I spend like, uh, a lot of days working with that with this kind of tool but um, it's not something that you can magically in one hour uh, guess what is the personality of the person etc the person as you said can fake and uh, it's more a tool like which helped me uh, to build a relationship with the person not to not lock, to lock them, not to put the person in a, in, a, in, in, a, a box. in a box it does not help no. Mm -hmm. essentially you're, you're looking mainly at the fit of the person like uh, is there as you mentioned chemistry um mm -hmm. involved and that's so it's a, essentially a measure of fit it's not about are they good or bad themselves in in some absolute way but just are they fitting with you and are they fitting with the team is this uh, the, the we, measure we, we try yes for, yes uh, as we said also we try for our part to be objective to don't have so much feelings because at the end we don't work directly with the person so we try to, to stay focused on what fine, on the process on the process and then with the team of course it's just okay subject it's just it's just feelings yeah most of the times yes 
most of the time. Okay. But it's right. the right. course of communication, but most of the time it's yes. Okay, we will now go on to the next question. Well, this was in relation to the comment about the sport coach applying to, like, for example, agile or technical coach position. But here we also have the reverse situation of, uh, you know, I'm currently looking for a job. Every company job description contains the languages used, tech stack, salary, not much about how the team works, nor about the mindset. So basically all job ads are pretty much looking yep. the same. They might be ser searching for Java or Spring Boot. What is your suggestion for companies or what did you mm -hmm. practice up to now? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I would like to add one thing here. What we did, um, we're receiving at the beginning, we're receiving lots of candidates that did not fit for the, our job description. What we did with Adrian, well, we contacted all of the companies. We set up calls with them, lunches, business lunches or calls, calls uh, during pandemic, uh, business lunches when it was possible. And we were exactly discussing what uh, Protect22 mentioned here. We're asking when we send you a job description, what you understand from that? And they were saying, we understand the technical stack, that da, 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 but we don't understand how the team works because lots of candidates uh, candidates are asking precisely this. So what we did, we we started, we first of all, we tried to improve our job description. That's one. However, we, we cannot go very deep. So what we did, we're sending the job description and we agreed with the companies when they receive a job description from us, what they will do, they will contact us and will say, give, give us more details about teamwork, mindset and whatnot. And companies who would have those candidates, possible candidates for us, will send them exactly this kind of points. And they con this will be much easier for the companies to select uh, the consultants they, they can find or do a pre-screening for new joiners. So this, we did that. But we did this in a in a in a sense to improve the process that we have, and we actually, as you know, in software engineering, we discussed with the client. What we did also, we removed uh, like uh, before we we put uh, our hands on the CVs on the job offers. It was like we are looking for version two dot three uh -huh. of this and this and this and this. It was really. Make yes, no sense. Yes, yes. Uh, yes indeed, indeed. For, for us, it's clear we don't look for a candidate. We know which version of which framework. We just we want someone who who, who, who like to learn new things and uh, who is open minded and uh, who has focus on quality and that's it. Yeah, yeah. We we added these kind of things: clean code, um, mm -hmm. uh, desire to share. Uh, yes, following uh, practices and so on. Yes, indeed. We we added these kind of things. Yes. That was actually going to be my next question about uh, do you add the words clean code and do you add test-driven development or anything else or just sticking to the clean code part? We tried. We tried to do uh, to formulate in the following way. Master of clean code, ninja in TDD, uh, blah, 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 blah. No. Eventually, all of the feedbacks uh, when discussing whether this feedbacks we received. No, it's too complex. Just guys, keep it clean. Okay. A person who knows clean code. Okay, the stack, yes, we do Java, Spring Boot, maybe, and I don't know, CICD, whatnot. However, clean code, this, this, TDD, and whatsoever, but very simple wordings, yes. yes. We, we have also tried to communicate on uh, craftsmanship. Does not work either. In Luxembourg, do you know what's craftsmanship? No. No. Uh, yeah, exactly. Some some of those words are not, not well known. And as you mentioned, actually, the word clean code is yes. uh, the most uh, widely known uh, way to communicate. We're looking for someone who, who cares about quality. So many people know, know about the word clean code. And yes. it could be that maybe someone does not know about TDD, does not practice it, but they uh, write uh, clean code and those people would actually be receptive to uh, learning as well. Agreed. So, so that great points. Uh, then the next one is an interesting one. Is it possible to have a leaked version 
of the, <laughs> the big pile. So it, it, lo it looks like you're raising the popularity. Even uh, when you started describing uh, what is in the file, I was like thinking maybe I, I want to apply as well. Uh, so, uh, yes, yes. Uh, so it, it was also interesting how you described the benefits regarding the people who take care and who actually show interest in your file and uh, doing some activities and people who actually spend their own time learning that those are also the people who are, who are uh, looking for. So yeah, if you ever do uh, have a publicly leaked version, feel free uh, to, to let us know. Yeah, so uh, connect us, contact us in LinkedIn and we'll send the, the ship to you. It's, okay, a, great. it's Java 8 version and why Java 8 is very simple reason. We still uh, receive candidates who never did anything else than Java 8. So because we consider that everyone should pass the same should have the same experience in terms of steps, organization, so on, to avoid, you know, uh, friends, uh, cousins, and so on. I don't know how it's called in English, but you know the word, you know the yeah. So to avoid any of that, everybody has the same complete experience. And uh, it's so that's why it's Java 8. And uh, if somebody okay. likes it's too old, no, it's not. It's There is a reason. Great. So this means whoever is interested or watching this can send you a message on LinkedIn. Yes, no problem. Okay. Uh, great. Yeah, we will have your LinkedIn profile links as well in the description. Uh, what does it mean to not work out with a candidate? Can you give us some examples? Uh, you had it in one of your uh, slides. Uh, something did not work out with a um, uh, candidate. Don uh, uh let one out. not sure maybe you need to to um to... remember it was at the beginning or i don't remember. Uh, let me see. There, are, there are two two parts basically there is our selection like uh, the first first contact what can be wrong i, I think, think maybe, we... maybe after uh i think some slides after i'm also trying to remember wh where it is but maybe mm -hmm. go on to the next one i, I think we explained uh for for the first part, huh? it, it, it's clear if candidate is not able to explain, uh, um, like we discussed about what is on his CV, what is on his experience, and is not able to explain uh, why he has choose this over this and this. I think we explained that. But maybe uh, yes, maybe the next slide after this. I remember seeing it somewhere. Uh, and maybe next one. Uh, next one. Uh, I think it was one second. About the, the feedback. If if it doesn't if it doesn't work out with, with the candidate. Okay, so I, I think it was referring to that one. That's the one where you explained yeah. uh, where where it didn't uh, work out uh, with the candidate. So what does the word not? Yeah, it was it was hard to cut it short. Like this, this. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, we need to, the context because I'm afraid uh, I'm not really. I don't get the question completely. Right. Oh, okay, May, maybe Dragos could then clarify additionally in chat, and we will now go on to the next yes. question. Yes, yes. Okay, the next question was actually one that I wrote mm -hmm. again regarding some parts uh, slides. It was the issue about candidates saying. Yes. We did uh, versus you asking their contribution. What happens if teams, some of them are working previously in a solo base, some of them working in mob based uh, uh, program? How do you solve it in that situation? Yeah, I, will, I will give you one example because there is a detail. Uh, we do lots of interviews in French. When we speak in French, you, the, the, it's quite often that people speaking in French, uh, you say like this Hello, Adrian. Uh, um, can you explain um, what you did in your latest project, for example? And uh, Adrian will say, on a travaillé, on, on, which means basically we worked. And you say, okay, you worked on this project, and you, you, he will, he will continue saying, on, 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 and we, we, which is not really we, like. 
we, but not we, but it's not really clear who exactly. And like I used, uh, it's not me. And usually we say, okay, so you as a team, you, you achieved this particular goal. Fine, cool, cool, great. And the, thanks for the information. Now, for example, you, you work more on the code, you are teaching, you're writing diagrams, writing unit tests, integration tests. Can you be more specific about your implication? Because when we all, uh, you know, install a door, at some moment, somebody will have the, the hammer in the hand. So we'd like to know, did you use that hammer or did your colleague use that hammer? So we'd like to know what, what was your contribution to yeah. the thing. So we are interested as a team, for us it's very important somebody mentioning the team, but in order to assess the person or to assess the skill set of that person, we need to know as well what this person did. Uh, Valentina, you, you remember before, before we start, um, we discussed about uh, testing. Uh, like mutation testing. I think we discussed yeah. about this before we yes. started. Yeah. We had one depth which said um, uh, we did uh, mutation testing. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, but what <laughs> did you do? What did you what, what did you implement it? What how oh, it oh, oh. so did you wrote some tests basically? Voila. And uh, what kind of uh, framework did you use to do mutation testing? We, we expect that he said like uh, PyTest or I don't know something. Mm -hmm. Tom framework, it yes. doesn't matter. So, or maybe not a framework, maybe they did something. Voilà. But asking question, we just understood that he just know the, the, the term, mutation testing. And the team did. The team did everything. So he was just, basically, he was receiving um, uh, feedback. Uh, he was looking at the, the- Jenkins results that the tests were voilà. failing. So yes, they worked with mutation testing, but he did not put it in place. It did not write the test, and it just read the read the the result. The result. Well, build build failed or build succeeded. Basically, th that's why we ask. We are not interested about what the team has implemented. We are interested about what you implemented. It doesn't mean that it's bad that you did not do uh, a mutation testing. No. You know it. It's good, but what we did you are practice? looking for is what did you practice? How you contributed to the team? It's it's important to speak about the team. Yes, we, but we are not assessing the team. We are assessing you, the candidate. Uh, exactly, and I just want to add, even in the cases of mob programming, at any given point, one per like one person is typing, one person is speaking. Hence, even in that situation, someone can say, "I contributed to I don't know." Uh, the the idea of I, design. I don't know. You know, I started with unit test, and a colleague of mine did the implementation, and another one, I don't know, did the API part. And it, even if it's if it's mob, uh, even if it does not have the keyboard, let's again take the example of of, uh, of uh, mutation testing. He should be able if if they were in a mob doing that. The candidate should be able to explain exactly what happened. Yes, exactly. it was not like uh, doing something else on his phone uh, while people were uh, implementing tests. That, that, that's a good. That's a good test. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> uh, we'll now get to the next one. Have you read Sandra Mancuso chapters about recruitment, the software craftsman? If yes, in what way do you think it relates to your experience? I, I haven't. I haven't read the. Um, this is in my to-do list, but no, I haven't uh, read. Uh, Great. Yeah, uh, you can maybe write some post or something in the future after you do read it. Did you read this part? I don't. Uh, I, I don't read it. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one was a uh, comment. So for diversity, it was about the same ratio in engineering school, about five percent of women. So it's not just IT, but broader then we also had some nice about, about this part what um in just the previous comment uh, what he has uh, mentioned indeed i was giving uh, for five years i was giving courses for java and uh, ddd and architecture and whatnot at uh, university in france and uh, yes yes the, the percentage is very small and i was talking with the university to find ways to encourage uh, girls to come to apply for, to the university but it was for them they were already saying that it's extremely hard, but they are just doing everything you want. And still we see this around 5%, which is 
Yes, it yeah, is. definitely. I think it's a challenge that probably no one has really solved yet. Um, yeah, so in any case, we also have several more questions. Well, firstly, some thank you notes. So you. this thank is you. nice. But okay, then we get the next question. How do you inquire or measure fashion? We, we don't measure it, but I think it's it's easy to, to, to see. When we have candidates who say, um, what is your passion? I like to, to code, I like to learn, I go to, uh, to um, meetups. meetups. I, it's, you see it. Well, how, how I see it, for example, in the passion, I think it's difficult to, uh, to measure, it, but in inquiry, this can be a thing. Um, yes, about what uh, Adrian just said, we are asking, how do you learn? In general, how do you practice? You only in your eight hours. The, the I, eight I hours think maybe we don't even have to ask. True, true. With the passionate uh, candidates, the candidates, uh, basically, when we ask to to that uh, they present themselves, first thing they say, I'm passionate. True, uh, true. You, yes, usually this word, the they, they, they yes, they you, say yes, 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 they and, say. Um, and how they master the tools. This is very important. For example, how you master your editor. People who are passionate, they really learn how to use a tool. For example, uh, people who are really into eight hours mindset, eight hours of work mindset, they usually are using a cursor to select an auto completion option, even if the cursor is at the, in the other screen. So they'll bring the cursor to select the thing instead of pressing arrow down enter, for example, or, or um, <clears throat> people who are really writing the code with the shortcuts, but not necessarily with the shortcuts, but by um, leveraging the um, uh, features of the tool that they are using, regardless of the tool, VS Code, IntelliJ, Eclipse, uh, whatnot. This, for me, this is an example, or people who are writing uh, Java, or not, uh, I'm saying Java, it's a habit, people who are writing code, beforehand without creating files. So for example, I'll, I'll write code, the, my code will be read, but I'll write the services I want or the components I want, I'll write them in the code. And then with the IDE, I'm going to generate all of the boilerplate that I would have generated by hand. And for me, this is a passionate person who is focusing on, on the value. And uh, another thing is people who are using the word product. Um, I think not that, many, uh, lots of people are using the word code, which is good. But exactly, you know, product is rare to find among software developers <laughs> to, to use I'm the word. I'm saying I'm developing, a, first developing a second, a product. Oh, wow. Okay. Now we're talking, you know, it's, it's important. I think that um, to write good code, you need passion. Yes. Absolutely. Otherwise you just stop when it works and uh, you don't have this, this, uh, this passion to, to make it even, to make it better. Yes, yes. To make it clean. Uh, exactly. And another, I mean, similar, as you mentioned, those kind of candidates, they already talk about their, their interests or they may already mention uh, um, that they've read books or went to meetups or did some GitHub uh, projects. Uh, basically, they're showing some additional initiative that they had done, which is often a, quite a useful measure. Now, the next question, uh, what is the ratio of accepted candidates? 75% uh, uh, for your round, but in total. Mm -hmm. And how many times per week do you invest in interviewing? Uh, do, does it become a dedicated job? If you can uh, uh, show the, our screen again. Uh, we yes. have this matrix. Uh, I will show it. Um, it was like, yes. Uh, we, I think we received something like 200 CVs in total. Oh, yeah, but this, something this around. those statistics. Uh, yeah. For the candidates that we interviewed. We, it was like uh, exactly, exactly 100. around 3% that of the candidates who say no. Who the candidates who themselves said no, I don't like. But uh, the hundred percent was around one hundred one candidates, I think. No, one hundred two or something like that. Right. So it's almost a matching between percentage and, um, and the candidates. And what you can see in this um, in this diagram, uh, around uh, fifteen percent, uh, we say yes. yes. We say yes, and candidates say yes. Yes, yes, yes. which is okay. uh, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It looks n- not so big, but uh, it's 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 good. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. One on one on ten. Yes, yeah, so it's good. Uh, it's it's higher than uh, the percentage uh, I was passing when I did interviews. So this this is pretty good. Uh, my figures would tend to be very also around maybe ten percent. So I actually had even lower mm-hmm. uh, pass rates, or, or even sometimes in worst cases five percent. So it it really varies around that kind of uh, uh, number due to having that kind of process. So if here, just everyone watching to understand that. So this means out of 100, uh, uh, if 100 candidates apply, for example, so uh, 81% of those candidates will fail your interview process. Uh, and uh, 16% will be yes from both sides. So both you say yes and the candidate says yes. So it leads to employment. And 3% was you maybe gave them an offer that, or they passed, but they, for example, decide not, not to go uh, uh, forward. Uh, so I guess the other related part of this question... How many times? Um, at first, uh, it almost became a full-time job. Yeah, for a couple of months, it was a full-time um, job. But if we did not, if we would have not changed our our uh, process, ah, hundred percent, we we would have to hire someone to recruit with us. Yes, 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 yes. Um, mm-hmm. And once we have put in place this this uh, this uh, the first contact part was really helpful to. To, to cut it short, like really 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's enough. Usually we, we know. Yes. And um, I, I cannot to this part that does it become a dedicated job? Um, it could be, uh, for example, in my company, in the company I founded, this is an offer for the services that I'm offering. It's so with some companies, with some of my clients, we are actually doing only that. So it could become, but I can tell you it will be boring. If you do yes, only this, it would be boring. And I, I think that um, we also, um, it's, um, I don't know. We said in the introduction, we, we are not professional recruiter, uh, which is still true. Um, if one day we, we became professional recruiter and we do that for uh, years, then we will we will not be aligned anymore with the technical aspects. We we lose we lose sure, uh, sure. Yes. we we lose the the contact with the teams how they work what are their uh, their daily their problematics etc etc. We would lose the um, the efficiency the efficiency for sure. If if we, if we would became a full time job, uh, it would not have. Yeah, it will not be no. so uh, so uh, valuable. The result yeah, won't yeah. be so valuable. Right. So, yeah. yeah, definitely great great points. Uh, do you make differences in the way of working between uh, consultants and permanent contractors? Permanent contractors, I think you speak. I, I have a feeling huh? a permanent contract is uh, internal. Is somebody who is hired by the bank. I, I, I think do. that permanent contractor is essentially okay, so they're not an employee, but basically they generally work uh, full time, and they are almost lo- like an employee. At, at least that's that's my understanding. Of course, Blago, what can we say is that um, in this context, uh, especially for us, it's difficult to onboard someone and to invest time with someone. So uh-huh. we, we prefer to, to have uh, people that are, uh, let's say the opposite. We don't like people that are working for uh, two, three months and they leave. We, if we, if we. I don't, uh, one moment, let me say this, because uh, I think uh, this is very French. It's not that we don't like those people, just to be no, clear. No, we like <laughs> It's, it's a different what we uh, I think what Adrian was uh, wanted to say is the, just to be clear the process yes is the same the process of hiring of technical interviews we don't care if it's a consultant or uh, somebody who is hired by the bank because we have only two these types 
somebody who becomes an employee, somebody who is a consultant for a period of time. The process is the same. However, when it comes to decision, decision meaning, yes, we continue with the candidate. No, we don't continue with the candidate is what uh, Adrian said. If it's somebody who, who will become an employee, we will assess much more deeper in possibilities in way of this person is looking at the clean code, at the practices, at the things. I mean, at the end of the day, does it worth the investment? Because onboarding a person on a full time means quite a lot of investment in onboarding, potential investment huh? in onboarding, keeping this person, uh, making it feel uh, welcome and uh, lots of things. So if we do, if we are not sure with the candidate, which will become which will become potential regular employee then it's highly likely that this will be a no-go even though the process is the same so we are taking into consideration this aspect because we want that not only we feel good with the candidate but we want us all to feel good because the candidate will will not have the anymore the candidate hat will have the colleague hat so yeah you explained it um uh great and also one other point with this kind of uh, things with uh, um, consultant and permanent uh, i think there is no real difference because uh, permanent or uh, not permanent uh, they can they can resign anyway so uh, yes yes permanent let's say like this permanent can be six months yeah and uh, consultant can be five years, yeah. six years. Yeah. Yeah. So does not change uh, in that way. Um, in the process, uh, true, true. The, the, right, the, right. the difference is that also we did not mention that because um, uh, it's, it's something else. But if it's um, permanent, like employee, you will also meet the um, HR. Yes. And, uh, yes, for the for the employees, our HR department will be doing this uh, HR, HR and, thing. Yeah, this the HR thing. Yes, with questions and psychological profile. Mm -hmm. And we don't have uh, uh, any view or uh, no. things to do uh, anywhere on that. It's the process. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Great, you're focused on the whole technical excellence uh, sk skill set. Yeah, perfectly uh, so. yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It matches with the name of the meetup group as well. <laughs> so that's why I say it twice. Uh, as an IT recruiter, I found myself in your stories. Okay, this is nice. We have actually not, not just developers, but the IT recruiter here as well. So delighted to hear your thoughts and methods on how you are dealing with tech interviews. Thank you for sharing your experience. Okay, great. You're getting a lot of... Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Verica. Okay, um, the, this part was on people starting discussing on the reason why it did not work out. I think that was related probably to the topics uh, uh, above. I guess that, that's, that seems to be a popular one. Thanks for the presentation and sharing your experiences. Okay. Thanks for being with us, yes. And can you share with us how do you work usually with your colleagues from the HR department? You discussed mostly about your part in interviews, but what part from recruiting process is doing by the HR? Uh, this is a thing that I think we had somewhere in the slide, if I'm not mistaken, but indeed we haven't mentioned it. We're saying uh, it's a thing where we say a person needs to be, um, a person, a candidate needs to see a start and an end of a process. This is, this is crucial. It's highly important for the candidate to be clear when it starts, when the process starts, and when the process ends, and what is the exact result of this process. So indeed, we are what we did, basically, we, we went like, hello, HR. Uh, we received this CV, so let's uh, do it in the following way. You receive, you ask when you have a job, um, when somebody from the business is saying, you, we need this uh, person, you come to us, we give you the description by collaborating with that uh, particular need. So we define a job posting, we validate it with the uh, requester, 
this is what we think it should sound because this is how you described and blah, blah, blah. And then we go back to the recruiter. We tell the recruiter, this is job uh, listing. The recruiter is posting that job listing regardless if it was consultant or not. And then when the candidates start arriving, uh, the recruiter will do the first, uh, the first interview uh, based on the list of the feedbacks that we say, yes, we, we agree to go with this out of 10 CVs, we go with three. So the recruiter will contact only the three people who pass the initial CV test, if you want. So that's oh, the okay. same thing. And uh, it's not only us who decide that, it's us, the business, the, it's multiple people, people from the team. So we will say, I think we should go with this candidate. You think we should go with the other candidate. So the recruiter will see both of them, you see? So in this way, we do a selection from out of 10, we'll get, go for five. And then out of five, recruiter will say, we continue with five or we stop at three because reasons with a detailed report on the reasons. And then with these three candidates, we'll go with the third minutes connection, the call, pardon. And then uh, after the third minute call, we'll decide if we go further. And if yes, we go. If not, we stop the process and we say to the recruiter, we stop the process here and the recruiter goes back and stops the process. Or we send, the, if it's a consultancy, then we tell to consultancy, we are sorry, but we are not continuing with this, part this particular profile. Mm -hmm. we, we had also uh, in the past some negotiation, uh, like in, in the job offers, there was um, usually past part in the job offer that were written by the, the, the requester, the, could be the team or manager or voilà. And some other parts were like standardized um, HR thing, like you are in, need to have minimum five years of uh, uh, graduation after school and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this and this. Flying permit, ski experience. <laughs> no, but almost that. <laughs> Driving licenses. Yes. No, no, no. Well, like for us, it was like the same as, yes, as yes. asking for driving license. And um, the biggest discussion that we had was to remove this this um, this uh, education yes. uh, five years uh, because we we thought it it has no um, no benefits and it could even be dangerous. Dangerous. Because people can say, oh, I have only four years, an expert, but I'm having only four years and then they wrote five years. I'm not qualifying for the job. No. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. And maybe someone can even be uh, have two years of experiences, uh, but be really talented and put in a lot of the self-initiative in learning and can write better code than someone who was writing code for... 10 years, I mean, I've seen it uh, plenty of times. Yes. So uh, that, that's definitely a good point. Now, in your answers, you mentioned the word recruiter a lot. Now, coming back to the question, since it mentions the HR department, does it mean, you know, I mean, some companies who have HR department, they can use the HR. Some people contact, have recruiters, then recruiters, but it's same answer. Uh, when we said recruiter, is mostly about the role. Not uh, ah, oui, okay. title, job okay. title. Okay. Ah, okay. But it's you HR, uh, you're, you're referring to HR in the company. Yes. Um, oh, so HR, they are not looking for the same thing. Uh, for sure, they delegate us the technical aspects and also the career aspects. Uh, we don't care if, uh, if, the, if the people uh, we are interviewing uh, I don't know if they want to become a, a CTO in, a, in the company. In the or company or this, we don't. We don't. It's not uh, in five uh, years. Voilà, it's it's not our. Uh, it's not something in our plate. In, voilà, something. Also, I, I know they they like to to know how the candidate um, is interested by the company itself. Uh, is the candidate uh, asking, questions. Uh, asking question about uh, company, the thing, and that, that those aspects we we are not interesting for us. Um, not not that much. 
we might consider the questions but usually we don't it depends it really depends okay. this is and really also all the salary uh, package oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, this we don't care we don't care about it. so the hr would essentially if i understood it correctly so up, up, it goes like this so there's a person who's uh, requesting uh, a new team member so it could be a team who needs an additional team member or some engineering manager so someone has a need yeah. then uh, that person speaks if i remember to with you HR. First, with hr sorry with it's with hr first and then hr would contact you because they need you for the technical description you would yes. together collaboratively with hr write the job ad because the job ad it contains both uh, technical aspects but also maybe psychological or who knows what other personnel characteristics so it could be a collaborative work then hr puts up the job ad now when the applicants come in you mentioned you do the cv screening so not the hr but you're you're doing the you, you also um there are, um also so we worked with hr so i yeah. think we we have answered that there are also um a few ways far i don't want to go into every details but uh, in the past years we uh, uh, as we said we've seen uh, hundreds of cvs and uh, yeah. hundreds of candidates it was mostly for external uh, uh, consultants um, for uh, for internal uh, let's job. Put, let, one moment. let's put it shorter so we we do one part of the CV screening we do we do it and the, the team does it as well because mm -hmm. usually the CV goes to us somebody from the team and to the manager we all do a certain part of the screening not all of it because the HR for example take out you know what you mentioned the sport coach so the HR will take things that are completely unrelated. And then we do the initial screening of CVs, and then the HR will go and contact those people and then come back to us and say, okay, out of five that you approved, there are three that I approve now. And then with these three, we continue. Okay, great point. They're doing the initial filtering before it goes on to you after you finish all the technical uh, stuff, then HR will communicate the, the final uh, feedback. Okay, great. We also had another uh, thank you message. Welcome. And also comment, I have the same ratio and it's really time consuming. I think this is the biggest feedback about. Uh, yeah, um, I believe what you can try is the, um, uh, in, in what we presented, uh, try, um, try maybe to, to set up uh, this first contact meeting and see the result you you probably it's really efficient voila. it's very very efficient yeah we have a, a this ratio that doesn't mean we spend a lot of time with it so eventually we reduce the spend time on this mm -hmm. and even regarding that first screening i've personally found it uh, really helpful and predictive and i even cut down the time to 15 minutes because you can really t tell a lot. Uh, uh, I try to get a sense of both the person uh, technically uh, was their level mainly about, uh, I found that motivation about quality was also strongly correlated with performance on quality. Uh, just their interest in clean code or other similar things and also uh, their willingness to to learn and their willingness to share knowledge. I've found those ones to be quite predictive, even from just the initial 15 minutes and translating later. We also have another thanks for your presentation and answers. Okay. Thanks. Great insights, Mercy. Wow, OK, you've got, I think, Many probably thanks. one of the biggest number of thank yous uh, um, up to now and also now finally like a thank you from uh myself as well i really liked this uh, meetup topic because it's a topic which is not uh, discussed too much i mean many times people have meetups about tdd or clean code or something like that but the actual problem that companies are facing the ones who are actually looking for tech excellence is how do you actually bring in these uh, people so from 
uh, I guess the key takeaway from, from uh, this whole session is uh, if there's engineering leaders who are watching this uh, meetup or maybe also tech CEOs, CTOs, whoever else is in a leadership position, tech, tech leads as well, as well as HR recruiters, if your company is a company which is looking for uh, people who who will uh, fit into a technical excellence culture, don't just assess java.net or some other tech stack, but actually uh, assess uh, and don't assess memorization of algorithms either, but yeah. assess what's actually needed for the job. So basically the biggest problem that we have in uh, business software is maintenance cost. So by assessing uh, the ability to write clean code, it's already a strong predictor of future um, success. Yes. So, yeah, I just want to say thanks a lot. I really enjoyed uh, this whole session. Thank you, Valentina, for the, for the invitation. Yes, it was a big pleasure. And thank thank for um, letting us uh, yeah. speak about and, this. And, and I think it, it all started with your, uh, with your post on LinkedIn about uh, yeah. recruitment. Yes. So yes. It was the beginning of uh, uh, our... Uh, motivation to to share to share this with you yes yeah definitely yeah i'm really glad um that, that we had this opportunity for you to to share your experiences and hopefully maybe something in the future as well so yeah i just want to also say uh thanks a lot to our uh viewers as well and just to finish off so uh feel free to join us on meetup in order to uh, get notifications about our future events. Also, uh, since many people already said thank you, um, feel free to like this video and also subscribe to our channel. Additionally, you can follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter to get future updates. And also you can uh, check out our GitHub page. So thanks again uh, to everyone and uh, have a good day. So bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. You. bye.